You've probably heard about N8N by now. It's been everywhere on YouTube and X lately, and for good reason. This tool basically lets you automate your life using AI. But here's the thing. Even though N8N offers all these amazing integrations, you still have to manually drag and drop nodes to build anything. You need to learn what each block does and figure out how to connect them properly. If only there was a way to just ask AI to create all the workflows for you, like you do with code. Well, that is exactly what I'm going to show you today. A while back, I made a video about the N8N MCP. It was an amazing MCP server and in that video we used it with Claude Desktop but while it worked well we still ran into a lot of problems. Today we're taking it to the next level with Claude Code, the best agent out there and I'll explain why this makes such a difference. I'll walk you through the entire process step by step. I've spent days testing this setup and I've discovered some crucial tricks that you absolutely need to know to use this properly. Otherwise you'll run into the same issues I did. Now a quick break to tell you about today's sponsor. Tired of clunky tools and boring decks? Meet the all-new Gamma, your AI-powered workspace for presentations, websites, and more. With just a prompt, Gamma can build an entire lesson, pitch, or proposal like I'm asking it to generate me a lesson on squids. The new update brings insanely powerful image editing too. Replace a subject, switch styles, or remove a background all in one click. The UI is faster, smoother, and built to make you look good without the grind. Share your content as a link or export to Google Slides, PowerPoint, or PDF. Working with a team, import your branding, collaborate in real time, and create reusable themes that stay on brand. Whether you're a creator, coach, or consultant, this is the tool you've been waiting for. Visit gamma.app to see what effortless content content creation really looks like. Before we start, let me briefly introduce the MCP for those who haven't watched the previous video. This is a truly game-changing MCP server, and I'll explain why shortly. We'll be adding this MCP server into Claude code for this video. You'll need a command to do that, which I've included in the resources section. You can copy and paste it with your own details. Simply paste your N8N API key where indicated and replace username with your personal N8N username. If you need help finding this information, please watch the previous video first. I've linked it in the description below. Once you run the command, it's added to that Claude instance for your current folder. Keep in mind that if you switch folders, it won't be available. So run this command in the folder where you plan to create your N8N workflows. After setup, when I launch Claude and check the MCP section, you'll see the N8N MCP is connected and ready to use. Here's why this MCP server is revolutionary. It performs two essential tasks. First, it accesses all the latest node documentation, analyzes it, and creates a workflow locally on your system system as a JSON file. This is the standard format for these workflows. Since it has complete access to node information, you don't need to provide any documentation or technical details. Second, it automatically pushes that workflow to your online N8N platform. You simply write your prompt and discuss any modifications you need. The MCP server handles everything else, researching updated documentation and pushing your workflows automatically. No manual work required. You might be wondering why use Claude code over the Claude desktop app. The key difference is that Claude Desktop functions only as an LLM. It doesn't have any special features beyond that. Claude Code gives you a full agent, and it offers many additional features with one key advantage. You can create workflows that break the entire process into manageable steps, resulting in much greater accuracy. When everything happens within a single LLM's context window, it tends to hallucinate and accumulate errors. This limitation restricts you to creating only simple workflows. With agents, however, you can build multi-step workflows. The agent completes one task, then moves to a fresh context for the next task and continues this pattern throughout the process. Since it's an agent-based system, it also has enhanced tooling capabilities. This means it can utilize the MCP server and its tools much more effectively than the Claude Desktop app. In the previous video, I demonstrated using the Claude Desktop app. After giving it an idea, it called the MCP, retrieved the information, built the workflow, and pushed it automatically. That workflow was a simple web research agent. I would ask it a question, and the agent would use various tools to find answers. It utilized the Brave Search tool to deliver search results. This was a fairly basic workflow that could be created easily. Since then, the MCP server has improved significantly. The previous issues we encountered, like outdated nodes and recurring errors, have been resolved. The problem with outdated nodes is 
now completely resolved because the documentation updates regularly. You can see another release was made two days ago with updated documentation. However, if you follow my method and still encounter non-existent nodes or configuration errors, there's one crucial step I initially overlooked that you need to address. You need to check your N8N version number and update it if necessary. If you're running an older version of the platform, you'll get errors because the MCP assumes you're on the latest version, causing mismatched nodes. One feature I appreciate is that the MCP does ask about your N8 and instance details, but as a best practice, always update to the latest version before starting. This ensures compatibility and prevents those frustrating node mismatches. So this was the workflow I ended up creating. Essentially, when I get an email in my inbox, it first checks using the OpenAI node whether it's a meeting email or not. If it is, we check calendar availability through the calendar node. If a slot is found, I schedule the meeting and send them an email saying the meeting has been scheduled. If no slot is available, then a no availability email is sent. While building this workflow using the MCP, I learned a lot of things. One of them being that you need to update your N8N platform, which is what I just showed you earlier. So now, let me guide you through that process. After starting Claude Code, I first check the health of the MCP. This verifies that my N8N platform and MCP are connected and can push workflows properly. You can see the success status shows true, confirming everything is working. As mentioned earlier, it asks you to verify your instance version number. When I needed help finding this, it provided clear instructions. Initially, it seemed confused about my version number, likely because it wasn't updated. However, it has a built-in diagnostic tool to test compatibility. After running the diagnostic, it returned true, confirming everything works correctly. These are just the initial setup steps. After that, you simply type your prompt describing what you want to create. I told Claude exactly what I wanted and using the MCP it immediately got to work. Before we continue, let me show you the actual results. I sent an email from one account requesting a meeting to the account configured in the workflow. You can see I automatically received a response confirming the time slot was available and the meeting was scheduled. Through my time working with this system, I discovered two crucial lessons that made all the difference. The first involved implementing what I call a delete and recreate strategy. You see, the MCP provides a tool called Apply Diff that's meant for updating workflows. Unfortunately, every time I attempted to use it, the process would fail. This led me to establish a firm rule where the system always deletes the previous workflow first, then creates a fresh one and pushes it to the platform. Now, while this approach does introduce some complications that I'll address when we examine the workflow, it effectively resolved our update issues. The second important discovery came after I solved the version mismatch problem. Initially, when the system created workflows, it would request multiple API keys for various services like Google Calendar and Gmail integration. It would direct me to Google Cloud Platform to obtain these keys, which turned into quite a time-consuming process. What I realized, though, was that N8N already offers a much simpler solution through OAuth integration. You just need to open the appropriate section, log in with your Google account, and everything connects automatically. There's no need to manually manage API keys at all. Based on this discovery, I implemented what I now call the OAuth first policy. Let me walk you through the complete workflow process I've developed. I'll be sharing this entire prompt in the resources section so you can use it yourself. The foundation of this system starts with your Claude.md file. All the rules I've mentioned need to be placed there, ensuring Claude understands them from the moment it initializes. This includes both the rules I've already explained and instructions about which files to read when they're available at startup. Now you might wonder where all these files come from in the first place. Let's start with the planning phase, which forms the foundation of our process. During this phase, you provide your initial prompt and describe what you're trying to build. It's important to note that this remains completely separate from the actual workflow construction. While my earlier example was relatively straightforward, more complex work workflows demand thorough planning from the start. At this stage, there's no need to dive into node research yet. Instead, the system brainstorms which tools and services your use case will require. For example, you might give Claude this prompt. Notice how you're not specifying particular services or nodes. That determination happens during this planning phase. The reason for breaking everything into distinct phases becomes clear when you see how MCP queries work. They return massive amounts of data that can quickly overwhelm the context window. By splitting the process into phases and saving each output to specific files, we maintain clarity and efficiency. The planning phase concludes by saving its output to a file called usecase.md. 
Following planning, we move into the research phase. The system takes the use case.md file and uses it to guide node research, pulling relevant information from the documentation. All these findings get saved to node research.md. Here's a pro tip I've learned through experience. Once planning completes, start a fresh session by typing slash clear to clear the conversation window. Since all the work has been saved to files, you don't lose any progress. This is one of the major advantages of using Claude code with a properly configured agent. The build phase comes next in our sequence. During this phase, the system reads both usecase.md and node research.md, then constructs your workflow.json file using the research nodes. It performs validation too, but maintains focus by only fetching the specific nodes identified during research. This keeps the context window manageable. Through my testing, I discovered an interesting quirk. Sometimes the system would hallucinate node fields, inventing parameters that didn't actually exist even when it had access to the correct documentation. Fortunately, when prompted to verify against official documentation, it would recognize and correct these errors. This observation led me to add the validate phase. While the MCP includes its own validation tool, I found it checks things differently and can miss certain issues. For the validate phase, I strongly recommend starting another dedicated session. Clear your window again and give it one focus task. Have it read the workflow.json file, use the available tools, and confirm that every node uses the correct configuration with no mismatched fields. What we've created here is a straightforward yet highly effective multi-phase workflow system. I'll include all the prompts and the complete Claude configuration in the resources for you to implement yourself. To test this process, I rebuilt my Gmail meeting scheduler agent from scratch. I now have two versions to compare, including one built using this method. The difference is remarkable. Error rates dropped significantly, and I rarely needed to ask for corrections. That said, real-world workflows can still present challenges. Sometimes you'll encounter a node that refuses to work properly, even though everything looks correct in the documentation. This happens because workflows often depend on external platforms and integrations that documentation alone can't fully capture. When you face these situations, I've found an effective debugging strategy. Instead of rebuilding the entire workflow or repeatedly asking for fixes, have the system create a separate workflow containing only the problematic node. For instance, when my check calendar availability node wasn't producing the expected output, I didn't try to fix it within the complex workflow. Instead, I asked for a new workflow with just that single node and its configuration. This isolation allowed us to debug efficiently once we identified and fixed the issue, we simply applied those corrections back to the main workflow. This approach of isolating problematic nodes for focused debugging before reintegration has genuinely transformed how I build comprehensive end-to-end -end workflows. It saves time, reduces frustration, and leads to more reliable results. That brings us to the end of this video. If you'd like to support the channel and help us keep making videos like this, you can do so by using the super thanks button below. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.